Well, what's up, Destiny Church? So glad you could join us. Church online again. Hey, listen, for the next couple weeks, what I'm going to do before we go back to uh, meeting in person. By the way, we're meeting in person again. Like, we get to see each other face-to-face. I'm so excited about that. But until we do, I'm not going to start a series. I'm just going to preach a few one-off messages leading up to that. So here's what I want to do. I want to preach a message today. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about, but before we do, let's just dive in. Let me pray for you. You're in your home. I don't know what you're doing in your kitchen, still in your PJs. Don't you just love church online? Um, but let me pray for you, and let's dive in. God, I just thank you today. You are good, and I thank you, the Lord, that we can gather around living rooms, we can gather around family, we can gather around friends, and we can stay connected with church online. But today I pray as we, can, as we think and we look towards September 13th and going back to meeting in person, God, I just pray, Lord, that we would all, you would refresh all of us, and God, as we go back, we would have a greater impact than ever before. God, it, it would be as if we're recalibrating, um, and as we, as we go back, we would not just be a church that wants to be bigger, but a church that has a big impact. God, I thank you for that. I pray for the word today. Thank you that it does not return to you void. It accomplishes everything that you sent it to do. In Jesus' name, amen. My wife and I, Megan, we just went on a holiday to Italy. First time in, the, in my life ever going to Italy. Um, honestly, it was a dream. And we were in a place called Lake Garda, beautiful. And I still, when I close my eyes, I still see the lake. I still see uh, me looking up at the Alps. It was so beautiful. I think it was the last day we were there. We were just walking around and enjoying the little town we were in. And I walked up to this castle, and I looked out at the water, and I saw people jumping off a cliff into the water. And I don't know, but something just rushed through me like, I got to do that. I didn't have a... I didn't have my swimsuit on or anything like that. I was like, I need, to, I need to do that. So I go back and I tell Megan, I said, hey, listen, there's people, there's people jumping off a cliff back here into the water. It looks amazing. And I've done this before um, back in the U.S., and my pastor took us to these different cliffs. Like one time it was 20 feet, 40 feet, 80 feet. You know, he just like leveled it up every day to see if we had it in us to jump. And so I was so excited to do this. We were going to get it on video, and, uh, you know, I was going to, of course, tell everybody and brag how manly I am uh, jumping off this cliff. And then all of a sudden, we're sitting there with the kids, and we're looking at this cliff. We're wa- watching these people get ready to jump off, and they're, they're beginning to jump off. And I'm looking down in the clear water, and I see some, like, rocks down there, and I'm thinking, kind of just calculating how far do I have to jump out if I'm going to do this and uh, where, where do I swim up and all these different things. And this question went through my mind, maybe a similar question that goes through your mind on, uh, on occasions, the question of what if, what if, what if I jump off and I hit a rock? What if I, what if I jump off, I can't get back up? What if I, and I'm looking at these rocks down there and this question of what if, so Uh, unfortunately, I never did take the plunge. I never did jump because of this question, what if? What if? And I want to talk to you today on this idea because I think so many times in life we ask, what if? We ask, what if this happens? What if that happens? And we play out these scenarios in our life living in this place of what if? What, What if? We live in a fearful place. What if this happens? And we never end up doing something, we never end up doing maybe what God is calling us to do, or we live in this place of, uh, of fear because we're constantly asking what if. Have you ever just asked the question what if, and it, was, and it was like what if, something super crazy, like something that would never happen, but you're like, yeah, 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 but what if? Yeah, but, but what if there's an earthquake and a tornado and the volcano explodes at the same time and, you know, so maybe we shouldn't, you know, you're like these absurd things, what if? I want to read to you today out of Daniel chapter 3, Old Testament, one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament, not because the book is Daniel and my name is Daniel, even though that is the best name ever. It's out of Daniel chapter 3, and it's about three amigos, three dudes named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I thought about naming one of my kids Abednego, and Megan said that's not a great idea. Um, you know, Abednego, I don't know. And their names were originally something, but... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were godly men. They were actually Daniel's companions. 
And they were living in Babylon, uh, a, a cultural space uh, that was very uh, oppressive to be in. Uh, much like our culture today, that's really, a lot of it was anti-God. Most of it was anti-God. And so uh, the king at the time, King Nebuchadnezzar, he told everybody, he told everybody in his kingdom, says, listen, I, I want you to bow down to my gods. You don't have the opportunity anymore to make up your own gods. You're going to worship my gods. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a bunch of music, and when you hear the music on a daily basis, at wherever you're at, you're shopping, you got to stop, drop, and worship my gods. Bow down to those idols. Well, these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, decided they were not going to bow down to those gods. Well, and it really made King Neb Nebuchadnezzar frustrated. Verse 15, I want to start in this point, and then I want to elaborate. And, I want to, and then I'm going to tell you where I'm going to preach out of today. It says this, verse 15, Daniel chapter 3. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him. I love this. This is, this is so gangster. Like, who says this to the king? King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. This was, this was reckless. I mean, this was crazy. Listen, our God's going to deliver us. But then it says, but what if, no, it doesn't say what if. It says this, it says, but even if, not what if, not what if he, you know, hey, Shadrach, what if, what if he does throw us in the fire? What, what's going to happen? What, Abednego, man, what if, what if they do heat up the furnace? What if he's not bluffing here? What if, he, what, if, what if this really happens? What if we die in this thing? Can't we, can't we like be more help to God if we, if we live? <laughs> not what if. It says this, but even if he does not, we want you to know. We got a message for you, Nebuchadnezzar. We want you to know, and I love how they say, your majesty. That we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Listen, King Nebuchadnezzar, you can throw us in the fire. My God will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will still not bow down to your gods. We will still not worship your gods. We will still not give in to culture. Even if what I planned doesn't happen, I'm still going to go the same way. Here's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about having an even if faith. Even if faith. Not a, not a what if fear. Not a what if this happens. But an even if faith. Even if. Even if I get sick, I'm still going to live for God. Even if I go broke. Even if I get demoted. Even if they don't like me. Even if I'm in the middle of a pandemic. Even if they throw me in the fire. My God is able to deliver me. Even if he doesn't, I'm not going to worship your gods. We need, I believe, more than ever in our culture today, and I just believe this was a setup for us going back to meeting in person, that we need some people that have an even if faith. Not, a, not living in the fear of tomorrow, what if, what if this happens, what if that happens, and calculating the next move. But I got an even if faith. Even if, it's not, see, even if is not denying the reality. Okay, that might happen. 
So, some, sometimes we get so spiritual and we deny, oh, that's never going to happen because my God is good. But sometimes we got to live in the reality, but we got to have an even if faith. Even if it does happen, I'm still going to press forward. Even if it does happen, I'm still going to serve God. Even if it does happen, I'm going to live positively. But I'm not going to dwell on the what if. The what if. Listen, even if, even if faith is fireproof, even if faith is pandemic proof, it's poverty proof. I may go broke, but I have an even if faith. Even if I do go broke, even if I do get sick, even if I am in the middle of a global crisis, I will continue to have faith in God. So how, how do we have an even if faith? Here's what I want to land today. First, I think we need to define faith. We need to define faith. Because how many times say, man, my faith is in God or that's my faith. Uh, Christianity is my faith. What is, what is faith? Now let me just get, let me just bury down in the teaching just for a second. The Greek word for faith is this, is pistis. Pistis. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. If you say it with an accent, it sounds better. Greek word for faith is pistis, which could be translated to fully persuaded. Now, sometimes when you think of faith, you think of just believing. I just, I just believe. I have faith in God, so I believe that God exists. Now, faith would be fully persuaded. But some theologians would actually say that this word, best translated in the English, would be allegiance. Not belief, not persuaded, but allegiance. So when I say, when I say I have faith in God, what I'm saying is, is my allegiance is in God. When I have faith in Jesus, my allegiance is with him. That's a lot different than believing in that God exists. It's a lot different. You see, the Bible says that even the demons believe. Even the demons believe and they shudder. The, demon, the demons believe in God. So what sets us apart as Christians? It's a faith, an allegiance to God. You see, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they couldn't, it, it didn't, wasn't just belief that they needed. You see, they believed that King Nebuchadnezzar existed. <laughs> he was right there in front of them. They believed God existed. But here's what happened. King Nebuchadnezzar was challenging their allegiance. And King Nebuchadnezzar was calling them to be allegiant to his gods. He was saying, I need you to devote yourself to my gods. I want you to uh, have allegiance in, the God, in my gods, the ones that I have set up, the ones that I have made. And as soon as he challenged their allegiance, that's what set them off. Why? Because they had a faith. They had a pistis. They had, a, they had an allegiance to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had, a, they had a, a fierce allegiance only to him. And when that was challenged, nothing else could stand. So they said, listen, even if, even if my God doesn't rescue me, my allegiance is still with him. My faith is still with him. Faith is allegiance, allegiance in God. Listen, because you can't have allegiance in two kingdoms. You can't have allegiance to the kingdom of this world. For them, it was Babylon. For us, it's our culture. It's whatever the world says to do, however the world says to live. You can't have allegiance to the kingdom of this world and allegiance to the kingdom of God at the same time. You know what they call that? They call that a double agent or they call that a traitor. You can only have allegiance to one kingdom. And that's what faith is. When you have faith in God, you're aligning yourself and making your allegiance to God. So when you say, when you raise your hand in a church service or somebody's prayed for you or maybe you've never made this decision, but when you say, I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life, when you make the decision of salvation, what you're saying is not just I believe in God, but what you're saying is my allegiance is with you now. My allegiance used to be in myself. My allegiance used to be in the world, in that system, in that kingdom, but I'm aligning myself with God. It is an allegiance. So here's how we're going to build an even if faith. Here's how we're going to do it. Three things. Here's how we're going to build an even if faith or an even if allegiance to God. Number one is you got to hear the word. You have to hear the word of God. 
the Bible. Hear the word. That's why Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes, allegiance comes, faith comes from hearing. Hearing. And hearing by the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of Christ. Christ, the word of God, hearing God's word. What we need to do is we need to be, we need to be students of God's word. That's why it's important not that you just read the Bible when it comes up on the screen on online church or when you're sitting in a church service, but you have your own Bible, you pull out the Bible app, you get into inside um, a devotion for yourself and you read God's word. Because when you hear it, when you consume it, what it does is it produces faith in you. Hearing God's word produces a faith, an allegiance in you. It's like being in a kingdom when a king would say something. He, the, the king is going to address people. And can I tell you that the king, king Jesus has addressed people in his word. And when you hear his word, it builds an allegiance. It builds a faith in us. We, we need to be people who turn up the volume, if you will, of God's word. And we need to turn the volume down of the world. Because the more we turn the volume up of his word, that faith is produced in us. See, some, some of us have an allegiance to the world. Our allegiance is more in the world because maybe the volume of the world system is turned up. Whether it be through social media, whether it be through influence, whether it be for, from watching news. Not that any of these things are bad. All these things I, 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 I listen to. But I need to be careful personally that I don't turn the volume up of the world so much. And I turn the volume of God's word up. Because the more I turn the volume of God's word up in my life, my faith is building. My faith is being produced. We need to be hearers of the word. Not only do we need to be hearers of the word. Number two, we need to put faith in action. You can't just hear God's word but you need to act on it. That's why James 2.20 says, but are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow? I love it when the Bible calls people foolish. That, that faith without works is use, useless. Some versions would say faith without works is dead. Faith without works is useless. Like, like don't even worry about faith unless it comes with works. Faith without action is useless. Listen, you can hear the word, you can read it, and you can believe that God exists. But you, your allegiance is really tested when you act on it, when you begin to practice it, when you begin to act on what God is telling you, what you're reading in Scripture, your allegiance is tested. It's like it's, like, it's the difference from saying, hey, man, I'm on your side. I got your back. Hey, through thick and thin, you can say that. But when there's a time when you actually have their back or you need to have their back or are with them thick and thin to death do us part, when there's a moment, that's when it's tested, when the action is required. Because we need a faith with action. We need a faith with works. It's not just enough to have faith because it's not about be just believing that God exists. It's not, it's not that. It's about having allegiance to him. That's number two, put faith in action. And number three, we need to speak faith. We need to speak faith. Can I tell you that your words, the words that come out of your mouth, direct your life. The things that you say will direct your thoughts, will direct your attitudes, will direct your life. You need to understand that we can't just, we can't just hear it, we can't just do it, we need to speak it out. That's why the next time that you, you want to say what if, you're in a conversation and you, you want to say, yeah, but what you, but what if, like that ghost starts going through your mind? You gotta, we got to retrain ourselves. Not what if, but even if. Not, not what if that happens, but hey, hey. Even if that happens, even if they hate me, even if nobody talks to me, even if that, a tragedy happens, even if, even if. Get out of the speaking what if scenarios over your life. That 99.9% .9 of the time will never happen and live in even if. Even if it, listen, even if it does happen. Can I tell you, when you just, when you say that out loud, you'll just feel freedom. Listen, even if it does happen, even if it happens, I'm going to be okay. Even if it happens, it could be worse. Even if it happens, my God is good. Even if it happens, because that statement, just that statement, what if it will produce fear in your life? What if? What if? What if? 
it produce, it'll produce fear in your life. And fear will begin to grow. But if you begin to speak faith over your life, if you begin to speak faith over your life, even if, even if, my God, my God is big enough. My God is great. You begin to speak faith over your life. You begin to speak the word. Like literally take verses out of scripture and speak them over your life. Speak them over your kids. Speak them over your home. Speak them when somebody's sick in your house. Speak faith over your life. I love one of, one of my closest mentors, closest friends. He, he got diagnosed when he was younger with cancer in his, in his eye. He has a glass eye now. He, he kept the faith. He kept believing. And then later when I knew him, he got cancer of the stomach. And you know what? He sat us all down as a staff in the office and he said, hey, listen, I just got diagnosed with cancer again. And we were all sad and we wanted to you know, mourn with him. He said, hey, but listen to me. I don't want you to feel bad for me. I, and, and you know what he told us to do? He said, here's some things I don't want you to say. I want you to start speaking faith and what he said is, he's, what he learned was, is when he spoke faith over that thing, it was like a, it was like a, uh, like a growing flower. As he began to speak faith, that, that cancer, it would, begin to, it would begin to shrivel. It would begin to die. But if, if it was always negativity, like, hey, man, I'm sorry you're sick. He said, don't tell me I'm sick. I'm going to speak what I can't see. I am well, I am healed, I am whole. It was an even, listen, even if I got cancer, even if I'm going to speak faith in my life, even if I'm going to speak faith in my life, we need to speak it out of our mouth. One of the most powerful weapons you have is your words. Speak faith into your home. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. Now, as we, as we close, I just want to highlight this one story in Scripture because Jesus, Jesus points out one person in Scripture in the Gospels and said, I've never seen anybody with faith like this. One person he says that about. I've never seen anybody with faith like this. And guess what? It wasn't one of his disciples. It wasn't Peter. It wasn't James. It wasn't John. It wasn't Judas. It wasn't Andrew. It wasn't Thomas. It wasn't any of the disciples. You know who it was? It was a centurion. It was a Roman centurion. In Matthew chapter 8, it says this, But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. His love, his, his ser the servant of his home and his family who had served him for years had fallen ill. And then he says this, for I also am a man under authority. He could have said something like, I am a man who knows about allegiance. I'm a man who is aligned with my superiors. I'm a man who is under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. Nobody else in Israel have I found a faith like this. Why? Why? I believe it's because it's a because what we're talking about, faith is allegiance. It's not just belief. So many people believe, but this here's here's a guy who understood allegiance. He understood what it meant to be aligned and allied with a kingdom. He understood. So he understood when I'm when I'm what I'm asking for is my faith is in aligning with who Jesus is. Listen, Jesus, I'm so aligned with you. My allegiance is so is, is with you. All, all, I know all you have to do is say the word. You don't even have to come to my house. All you have to do is say the word. All you got to do is say it. He, he knew what allegiance was. He understood that it wasn't just belief. It's not just enough to believe. We must follow. We must follow. I so, I so desperately believe that this is a season for our church. I'm talking to our church right now. That we need to have an even if faith. We, we need to storm the gates of hell with an even if faith. We got water pistols and we're just going in. We, we want to see impact in our community. I believe that it, we, we're coming out of a season of, you know, fogginess, of 
what is going on didn't see this coming I don't know what to expect where we could easily say what if what if a second wave happens what if I get sick what if what if what if and I'm challenging myself and us today that we need to say even if even if I'm gonna see God's kingdom come even if I'm gonna I'm gonna serve even if I'm gonna go for it even if I'm not gonna back down I'm not gonna shrink back I'm gonna move forward and even if faith moving into this next season I believe that with all my heart and I believe if we could if we could be a church with an even if kind of faith we will see a greater impact than you could ever imagine. We will see those prayers that some of you have been praying come to fruition. I believe this is a season of great impact coming up. If we could just be people who have an even if faith, even if faith. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you're tuning in. Maybe you're watching for the first time. Maybe you've been watching for a couple weeks now. Maybe you've been watching from the very beginning. But you've actually never made a decision to follow Jesus. And I'm not just talking about raising your hand or clicking the I commit button because, oh man, I believe in Jesus now. What I'm talking about is having a faith in Jesus saying I'm aligning myself with him. This isn't just, okay, I believe. Check the box, now I'm going to heaven. That's not what it's about. It's about I'm aligning myself with him. I'm, I'm following after him. Just like the disciples when he said, hey, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. They dropped the, the nets. They dropped everything and they followed him. Now, I'm not saying pack your bags and go on a hike. I'm saying it's, not, it's no longer your will, but his will. And when you submit your will and take up God's will for your life and align yourself with him, can I tell you, you're up for an amazing adventure. And, and you'll, what you'll realize is what you had planned for your life was not as nearly as great and not as nearly as fun what he has planned for your life. If that's you today, I just encourage you to click the I commit my life to Jesus button that's popping up in the chat room. We'll have a trained host team member praying with you in, in a private chat. Nobody else will know it's you. And we want to give you some resources to help walk this journey out and to help, help you follow Jesus. And, I, and I'm just so excited for you. Let me pray for everybody, and then we're going to close. God, thank you so much today. We align ourselves with you. God, help us. Give us the courage to have an even if faith. Give us the courage and the boldness to, in the face of fear, in the face of hard times, in the face of thick or thin. Not that we ignore reality, but we look reality in the eyes and we say, even if, even if, even if everything goes out the door, I'm still going to pursue God. Even if, I'm still going to pursue the purpose and the call He has for me. Thank you for that boldness. Thank you today for everybody who made a decision to have even if faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were encouraged and blessed. Why don't you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video? I'd also love for you to share this video with somebody else, and hopefully they will be encouraged and blessed just as you have been. You can also join us every Sunday during our live church services. Hope to see you there.